welcome to Otaku no Video. As always, thanks for joining me. Time for your anime and manga news for 18th of January, 2010. First off, congratulations, Nana Mizuki. She's the first voice actress to get a number one single on the Oricon Weekly Music Charts. Good for you. In case you're wondering, the single is Phantom Minds. It sold 54,000 copies in its first week. And she's the voice actress uh, behind Hinata in Naruto, Fate Testarossa in Nanoha, Wrath in Full Metal Alchemist, and many others. So good for her. Some licensing news. A whole bunch of, of interesting stuff this week, just sort of miscellaneous. Uh, Hulu has started streaming the recent supernatural action anime Kekaiishi. Kekaiishi. They've already put up a, uh, subs of episodes 1, 2, and 5. 3, sir! 3? No. Uh, not a uh, Monty Python Holy Grail. Hello? Anyway, um, no, episodes 1, 2, and 5. Don't know why that those were chosen, but whatever. Meanwhile, in Japan, the fantasy manga Descendants of Darkness, which has been around forever, is finally returning, kind of, after a hiatus of eight years. Now, that's the hiatus between releases of the Tankoban, which are the actual, like, uh, you know, published books. Uh, so there have been a few issues being released very slowly over the past eight years. I don't know why. Uh, but so now, finally, it's back on track, apparently, and it's going to start continuing on and maybe end someday. Who knows? In, also in manga news, but kind of censorship news, Yoshiyuki Kazumi has revealed on his blog that his editor has told him to tone down the erotic content in his manga Konohana. The magazine is being published in is an all-ages magazine, which kind of explains that. Now, I haven't been able to track down a copy of it, purely for research, of course, not for any racy content. But uh, as a result, I have no idea how racy it actually is, so I can't comment on that. But it's not exactly a surprise. I mean, if it is an all-ages magazine, you don't really want, you know, nudity and all that, you know, rubbing on each other and all. all. Anyway, um, who knows? Uh, and it's also hard to find it because there's also a similarly named, like, Konohana Live or something, another manga that's out there, so there's lots of reference. Anyway iPhone fans, you may rejoice. There are now two apps for streaming anime on the iPhone, a Crunchyroll app and an Anime Network app. Now, they're both a little bit different. Uh, b both require the latest version of the iPhone OS, and the Crunchyroll app is free, but the Anime Network app will set you back seven bucks US. The Crunchyroll app only streams over Wi-Fi, but the I Anime Network app will stream over both Wi-Fi and 3G, or either one. So that, that's cool. Uh, once you have them on there, you can, you can stream a whole bunch of anime straight to there. The, uh, one other thing about the Crunchyroll app, uh, you can log in to that, but it doesn't give you access to the premium streams on Crunchyroll. So that's probably something that's going to be coming soon. I mean, this is just the first version. Uh, it's just kind of up there to get the, the, the streams going. So hopefully that, that'll, that'll come soon. But still, cool. Meanwhile, AnimeNewsNetwork.com has a nice roundup of the various ways in which anime has shown up on American TV recently. Not as in shows, as in references on established American TV shows. Uh, there was an otaku on American Idol, very briefly. There was a body pillow subplot on 30 Rock. A mention of hentai on Scrubs, particularly the, the more extreme hentai. And a reference to cosplay on Archer. So that, that's pretty cool. The Japanese Manga Publisher Society real, has released 2009 circulation numbers for a whole bunch of the manga magazines, you know, Shonen Jump and all those sorts of things. The winner by a mile was weekly Shonen Jump, by to absolutely no one's surprise. Over 2.8 million copies of weekly Shonen Jump were sold last year. Overall, the big names saw increased circulation, like the big five or six major Shonen and Seinen magazines. Almost all the others saw lower sales uh, in 2009 and 2008. Then again, there was a global recession on, so I guess that's no big surprise. Finally, I must end on a sad note. We've had two deaths in the anime industry this week. Daisuke Gori is the, was the voice actor best known as Mr. Satan in Dragon Ball Z, Basque Om in Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam, Dozel Zabi in Mobile Suit Gundam, and Hiromi Yamazaki in Pat Labor. He passed away on Sunday at the age of 57. And Takumi Shibano is gone as well. Now, very few people know who he is. He founded the first science fiction fan magazine in Japan, and that was a starting point for many Japanese science fiction authors. He also was a translator working on science fiction books. So he translated uh, Larry Niven's Ring World, E. Doc Smith's Lensman series, a bunch of very influential sci-fi things into Japanese. And so that got a lot of uh, uh, you know, Japanese otaku into those, those science fiction classics, and it, of course inspired a lot of ma manga and anime. 
Also, he was uh, a science fiction consultant on a number of classic anime series, including Tekka Man, Gacha Man F, and Kishan. So he was a, a, a major force in Japanese science fiction uh, fandom, and he was 83.